Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com and this is episode 205 of Photo Critiques. And in this episode, I'm pleased to critique the work of Oli Eklund. Oli sent me in some really, really nice shots and we're going to do something a little different in this critique and I'll get to that in a minute. This first shot though, it's a really, uh, really a nice shot. I like it a lot. Uh, great action shot, uh, you know, the dirt being thrown back, great color. Lighting was a little harsh, but, you know, it's a great exposure. You did a really nice job. Um, you know, you, the lighting is the lighting. You can't do much about it when you're doing, you know, an action shot like this. But you, your best you could do is control the light so you don't have stuff that's totally blown out, like this could be blown out, or stuff that's totally in darkness, and you don't. Everything, as you look at the histogram, is pretty much right in the middle. Did a nice job. Now, I'm really a proponent of getting things right in the camera. I want, I don't want to do a lot of cropping. As a matter of fact, I don't want to ever crop if at all possible. Now, because of that, I own like about a billion dollars worth of lenses, which makes it kind of ridiculous. All right, that's you know part of the deal when you want to do it right in camera. The other thing is that I have a lot of shots that are wasted because I don't want to crop them. I, I want to do it right in camera. So that's me. But I would encourage everyone to really try to get it right in camera and not crop if you don't have to. And, um, you know, not do this cloning and, dot, you know, stuff to get things out of the shot or, you know, when, when um, you know, stuff is bleeding in the shot. But what I'm getting at here, this guy here, um, he's cut off and he's really not part of the pack. All right. Now, in some sense, I kind of like it because the dirt is being thrown on him here. So it's kind of really cool in that regard. So the way this shot would have been better is if in camera you were just zoom back just a little bit and you got in his entire bike in the shot or you just edge this over a little bit, got more of his bike. But whatever it is, you need to get this entire bike in the shot. And it's a really winning shot. Now, you could crop it, as I mentioned, and make it, you know, I think a more interesting shot. Now, as I mentioned, I generally don't like to crop. And when I do crop, as you see that, I usually keep it so I keep it proportional because I, I like to keep that proportion that if I print it as 8 by 12, I know how much to, if I make an 8 by 10, how much it's going to crop on either side. But anyways, as I bring it in, you'll see now, I think this is a stronger shot, but we have this guy's hand still in the shot. So you'd have to clone that out. I hate doing that, all right? So I would never, if this were my shot, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't crop it. But, it. but I'm showing you, maybe, you know, maybe it's okay. Maybe you want to crop it. That's fine. That's your prerogative. It's your shot, okay? Um, bear with me here. So if you crop it, I, I, w I would suggest you, if you like this shot a lot, crop it, get rid of this guy, clone out his hand so that's not in the shot anymore. And I think it's a stronger shot. But I encourage you, if you ever get a chance to photograph this stuff again, is um, really get to know your equipment so you could zoom out, zoom in real quick, focus real quick. You could, you know, move around your focus point real fast. So you, you know, really got to be intimate with your camera and the lens so you could really capture these scenes the way that you've seen them right when it was happening then you don't have to worry about cropping or cloning out anything or you know duplicating anything or anything like that it's an interesting shot it's uh like backlit but i like the background the background's really cool i like that shot the flower itself isn't a super interesting flower it's kind of symmetrical though so it's kind of neat a uh, kind of neat shadow here and um it's an interesting composition, so I like it in that regard. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, the flower itself is not overly compelling, but it's kind of a cool shot. Now, this is where we're getting into something different. Oli mentioned to me that he can't decide whether he likes this shot better, this shot better, or that shot better. Like, which, basically, I think the way he worded it to me in his email, he, he wants to know which one's better. Well, the point is, though, it's up to you to decide what you like better because I guarantee you show this to 100 people you're gonna get like 33 saying this one's better 34 saying that one's better and 33 saying that one's you know it's alright I just added it so it equals what I'm trying to say is if you had 99 people looking at this you'd get 33 liking that one 33 liking that one at 33 it's really hard to say 
Um, everyone has their own personal tastes. Everyone has their own personal biases. And when you develop your shots, you really, in a way, got to ignore the, the noise that's around you. And you got to process your images for you, for the way you like it. And, you know, I could give you my opinion. I like this one. I just like it. I, th I just think the reflection is a little stronger of this down here, and I think it adds to the shot. Now, some people will, I guarantee, some people's going to like this shot better, which is kind of the opposite of that shot. And some may like this shot, which is kind of in the middle of these two shots. So, you know, it's not, like I said, it, it's not really, um, you know, up to me to tell you how to process your shot. I could help you, you know, give you compositional rules and things, and and but when the but when when it comes to you doing it, it's up to what makes you happy. So if you decide that you like it more of this misty look, uh, you know, I like them all. It's really, you know, for me to really clarify, I really do like all these shots. I like all three, um, almost equally, I would say. Um, I would say I like this one and this one just a skosh better than I like that one. And um, that's, like I said, my own personal opinion. The other thing is, for certain types of shots, um, it kind of would be depend on your application. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. This one doesn't matter because it's really a fine art shot. So this doesn't really, these three don't matter in that regard. You just develop it and you just like it. And whichever one you like, run with it. And this shot here now is just another developing thing. This is a panorama. And there's this one and this one. And, you know, this one's more developed, like, this one's more developed, like, with uh, vibrant colors. And the shadows are more opened up. And there's a lot of detail down in here. And this one is less developed, I think, just overall. Now, I, um... Of the two, if I had to choose one or the other that I wanted to print and put on my wall, it would be this one. I like this one. It's just, I like the vibrant colors, and I like detail. You guys know, a lot of times in my critiques, I talk about open up the shadows so you get some detail in here. I like a lot of detail when it's available. I like shots, though, that don't have detail, too. A lot with, like, negative space and things like that. I really like those shots. But in this specific image I like this one because I like seeing detail down in here because this is kind of partial framing and it's helping us lead our eye down into here to look here and we have all this detail and in my opinion the detail the details lost in this shot we have a lot more missed kind of view in this shot so um, like I said though that's you know kind of what I like but Oli whichever one you like go with it now, this is where I was getting at kind of your application. We have this shot and this shot. Now, they're both excellent shots. Uh, well, it's the same shot, just processed a little different. Just This one seems to have a little more exposure. Generally, though, if you're photographing for a wedding, let's say this was a bride and a groom, the uh, brighter ones with uh, kind of the light, uh, kind of overexposed look, those are more popular with brides. So if you were photographing for a wedding, this would be the shot to go with, not this one. On the other hand, if you're photographing a man sitting here by himself, uh, maybe he's holding a football, frisbee, something on the beach, you probably don't want that look. You're going to want this look. So you really got to know, too, on certain shots, what you're Devel developing for. If you're developing for a wedding, do it one way. If you're developing for a lifestyle shot for a guy, you know, a family and you're taking the picture of the dad or the son or something, then you might want it a little darker, a little more harsh side light to show some of the features a little more. So something like that. So, it, you know, it depends then in this case. So as I mentioned on these earlier ones here, these art shots, it's up to you. Just do what you like. Landscape panoramas, which are kind of art shots too, where you really are trying to sell prints probably. It's up to you too, what you like. Just do what you like and go for it. Then certain types of portraits, certain other types of shots, if you're doing shots, you know, for architecture, for um, 
you know, a, a business or, or, you know, for a magazine and stuff like that, you're going to have to cater to their needs and you're going to have to do it the way they'd like it. So it's good that you learn it all, how to process images all different ways. Then you're that much more talented and that much more in demand because you're, you'd be very versatile. You could um, process images for a wedding. You could process images for a business brochure or, you know, a, a business report, things like that. So you could do a lot of different things. Um, but when it all comes down to the bottom line, it's what makes you happy and just do it the way your gut tells you to do it and don't worry about anyone else. And that's it for episode 205. Uh, thank you, Ali, for uh, sending in your work. I really did appreciate uh, critiquing your photos. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I'd like to thank everyone that watches all my videos. Thank you very much. If you guys have time, go over to my website, anthonymorganti.com. I got all kinds of photography stuff over there you could learn from. And I'd really appreciate it if you took the time and went to YouTube and subscribed to my YouTube channel. That's it for now. I'll talk to you guys soon.